Welcome to this is Train Automation. Today we will talk about Yamork and the new range of products that they've produced. Um, they've been developed over the last three years. Um, they came to market last August and we just want to show you how every one of the five in the range at the moment works. There's things for switching, signals, accessories, point motors and track detection. So we'll look at some of the things, how we configure them and we'll go from there. So we'll start with the switch decoder. It's also called a signal decoder because it's got the UK signaling built into it. So we'll have a look at that. So first of all, there's a USB interface, which I've got here. This little device is used for configuring the switch decoder. And that's the YD8116. The interface module is a YD9100. So we'll look at this. Now, the way all this equipment works is the configuration software. And this configuration software can all be downloaded from yamork.de, and this is the website. When you look at one of the products under the service tab, there's the software and firmware where you can download it. So you just download it and run it on your Windows machine. Um, all the instructions for every product are there as well, so you can download them. They are all in English as well as other languages. Um, it's just a straightforward download setup, so we won't go through that now, but just follow the instructions on the screen as you download it. Uh, once you've downloaded it, you have these icons on the screen. And if we open this one, for example, we'll just open it up and I'll bring it across. There's different things as you put your mouse on the outputs that do different things. So you can look at the USB connection for it. And if we connect it in, so if we connect this up, it sees it. And now we have the serial number at the bottom for that device. So as new firmware comes for this, you can also update this. So it's always future proofed. So that's a really good thing. Uh, but you only ever need to buy one of these. So for all the devices you have on your whole layout, this one configuration unit will do it for you. Um, you'll see that there's a, they call this ES link, these little jumpers. So when you plug this in the, the port there, um, if you want to connect it to another device, I'll bring one in. So this is the switch decoder. You'll see there's a similar socket on the side of it. We just plug that in and now it will identify it. It's best to always plug this in before you plug the USB into the device. Okay, so make sure it's plugged in, then plug the USB in and it will identify it. You hear it seeing it again. When we click on the screen, so when we click on this output, we can now see the new device connected to it. Okay, so we open that up. Yep. There we go. So here is the device we've just plugged in. This is a switch decoder. So we can update the firmware of the switch decoder. So as new firmware comes out, we can look at that. So if I click on this ES link part here at the top, uh, the firmware you see and the latest firmware available to this unit. So if you wish to update it, you could click on update now and it would just go through that procedure on the screen. We won't do that for now, but we can look at that later. The unit has 16 outputs. So this is designed to switch low current devices. So signals, uh, light signals, um, lights in buildings, street lights, um, point motors, which are low current. So like these MTB point motors, um, these take about 150 milliamps to drive. So you could drive multiple ones of these. But the lovely thing about this switch decoder is you don't need to drive one device for the whole unit. Every output can be configured for any device in that area of your layout. So the first one might have a two aspect signal, then you might have a street light, then you might have a point motor, then a four aspect signal. Every time you do this, it just makes it easier, less wiring, not running the length of your layout. It just makes it more simple. So when you get the unit, first of all, if you press this PGN button, it shows you how the unit is configured at present. Now we've messed about with this one a bit. So normally as default, you would see 
every output with the two aspect signal. That two aspect signal is a constant driving output. So when the output's on, it's always putting current to it. So with the MTB point motors, it's designed as default to drive these because this has an off switch in it. So when you switch the aspect, it goes from driving to the left one way. When it gets to the length of travel, the point motor itself turns the power off. There's a switch internally in it. So as default, we're, you can use these with the MTB range really well. Okay, so if you wanted to configure an output, as you can see, you can put your mouse over each output. If you click on one of the outputs, you can see how it's configured now. And if you click on that output, you see the two states of what those outputs are driving. So in this instance, it's a two aspect signal. So if I was to click on the green, it would change state to green. If I was to click on it again and click to red, it changes to red. So that's the basic thing. So how do we configure the output? What do we want to drive on this specific output? So if I hit configure, in here is the configuration window. Uh, there's a drop down list. So what they've done with this unit is rather than with most DCC accessory decoders, you have to have a list and list of CVs. You have to change to configure the output to do whatever you want, which gets very confusing. And if you're not used to it, um, remembering all of those different CVs. You have to look it up, it's a pain in the bum. So what they've done is decided, let's get rid of all of the complicated bits and just give you a click choice. So if we click on this here, you can now see there's loads of different pop-up menus. And each pop-up menu gives you a different signal from different countries and UK. So we've got all the UK signaling. This is the first UK um, accessory decoder for signaling um, that is this simple to set up. And then we'll work with other software like iTrain, Train Controller, WinDigipet as well if you're into computer control. Um, so it, it literally you choose the one you want, you click on it, it assigns it to the amount of outputs it needs to drive that specific device. So if it was a three aspect signal, for example, a three aspect signal has three LEDs, green, red, and amber that would use three outputs of this device. It will only use the amount of outputs one after the other it needs to drive that type of aspect, okay? So if it was a three aspect with a feather, it'd be four outputs. If it was four aspects with a feather, five outputs and so on. It only uses up the outputs it needs to drive that signal. So we can just choose, let's choose three aspect. On the screen here, we can now see all the aspects you can create for that specific signal. Red, green, amber, red again. There's a reason for that, but we'll go into that later. Amber flashing or blinking, whatever you want to call it. And actually you can also turn off the signal completely. So at certain times of day, you may wish the signal to be turned off if it's faulty. You can simulate that as well. So once you've configured it, you click this tick button that assigns it to and tells you the outputs it's going to use up to, to, to drive that specific signal. So we click OK a few times. <laughs> it's just saying it's overlapping with stuff that's already configured in there. So you've got to just keep going until it's done it all. OK, so now when we look at this PGN again, now we can see the new signal, how it's configured it. So we can see it's now got a three aspect in outputs, the first three outputs. OK. So if we now click on output one here, you get the image of the signal you've just added. If I click on the image, you can then see all the different states. So if you had the signal wired in now and I was to click on green, it would go to green. And this also tells you how to wire the signal. So the first output has to be red for the red light. The second output has to be green for the green light and the third for uh, the amber. So that's the three outputs it would use. Okay. These are just other um, aspects that will be driven. So that's just, that, that's how you would continue. So if we wanted, we know we've used outputs one, two, and three. So if we wanted to go to four and we said, okay, on four, I rather than a two aspect signal as it's set at the moment, I wish to go to, let's say an on off switch for a light in a building or a street light, something like that. So I can just choose that. 
press tick again. And now we've got an image of an on off light. So you can switch it on and off. Now, moving forward, when they bring their digital system out, when you open the switchboard up for switching accessories, rather than have address one just as a green and a red to turn it on and off, you'd have actually the image of the device that you're driving on that output. It will remember it, you can store it in there. So visually, it makes your life a lot easier. Now you'll see, because we've put this um, uh, on off light on the output, if you look really closely on output five, it's changed color. Previously, the definition that was in output four and five was linked to a two aspect signal. Because now it knows it was only using one output, it's now freed this one up. And that's why it's gone to a different color. Okay, so that shows you that that's free and available for you to use for the next device you want to drive. So you just go through each output and whatever you've got connected to it, you, you tell it. So if we wanted to go to output here and have, for example, a turnout, you can, the reason there's images for left and right is when you have the switchboard in their digital system, you'll be able to see which way it's actually switched the point. So if it's a right or a left, so choose what you've got. So we want, I want to use the MP1 to drive a point. That's the definition you would use your ticket. Again, it's saying it's overlapping with a definition. So you just agree until it goes. And then it is flashing and it's um, programming it to the unit. So again in here, now you can see as we're going down, you've got all these different definitions. Once you've defined all the definitions for all of your um, different devices you want to drive, you can store this on your computer as well as a file. Uh, I can show you that. It's under here, export. So you can export these settings in here and save it. So you can say module one has these things on. You can save it to your computer. The benefit of this is if anything, God forbid, did happen or you changed the setting, you'd always upload the save file from history. So all these little things are really useful to make your life easier. Every output has an address, a digital address. So on here, with a three aspect signal, it would use three addresses to switch the signal through the different aspects if you were using just a normal handset. So if you had a Loconet system or an NCE system, you could use address one to go to aspect red, address two for green, and three for the amber. And you just scroll through those addresses, turning them on and off to create the aspects. Once you've configured it, if you're using it for iTrain, actually use something called extended DCC addressing. I'll come on to that later because it's quite in depth and something that's a lot simpler, but basically with DCC extended addressing, you're using, um, you're driving the aspect rather than the accessory address. We'll show you that in iTrain later on. So this is where the address is set here, first address for that unit, okay? So, yep, that's how you would set up this switch decoder. Um, if you want to simulate that um, before you put it under the layout, so you can do this all on your workbench to start with. I use these little LEDs. Um, so there's uh, a red and a green with a couple of resistors on. I'd plug this in the output. Well, I'll show you, it's probably just as easy. So this is using an external power supply. So in the top here, this is DC power, stable DC power. If you want to have DCC signal going in here to send it the commands that goes in the bottom, you could loop um, your DCC power from the bottom into the top. I like to do it with an external power supply, just keeps it separated um, and you're not robbing expensive track power for driving your trains to now drive um, your accessory decoders as well. So you can now see here, we have a, a red. If I change it to green, it switches to green, go back to red, it switches to red. So you can see that the configuration of that output is working correctly. I'd use these just to test. It's something that I like to do because then I configure every module before I put it under the layout. So we're gonna show you how to change the aspects from the configuration software. If I click on output one, we have the four aspect signal, which is this first one with the feather. So if you click on output one, you see the image. If you click on the image, then you can see all the different aspects of that signal. 
So if I click on double flashing, we can then see double flashing on the signal, hopefully, and we can. So if I want green with a feather or red only, you can go through every single aspect change you like. So let's create a route. So we'll go green with feather. So that signal takes the first five outputs, go to the next one, put that to amber maybe. And then the last one we'll put to green with feather. There we go. So you can see how you can quickly change all the aspects of that specific unit. You'll also see on here, um, I've got these little boards plugged in in certain signals. A lot of UK signals are negative return, not positive return. So this little module here, if you look at the back of it, it says to the decoder. So the outputs of the decoder that wires into then the signal here. What this then does is switch it from negative return to positive return for the accessory decoder. Some of these signals happen to already be positive return. So that's why they haven't all got them in these boards. So that's what this is. This is a YD6942. Uh, so for most UK signals, they are negative return, but some are now coming in as positive return like the rest of the world.